All right, good afternoon, this is Miss Roddy. And I just want to give you a quick homework reminder. Do Tuesday, 12-3. Child labor in triangle shirt waist fire notes. The men who built America, part three, begin at three minutes, end at an hour and three minutes. The men who built America, part four, begin at 50 minutes and watch till the end. Make sure that your sheets are filled out for uh, Carnegie, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, and Morgan by the end of these videos. All right, any questions, feel free, zip me an email over uh, the Thanksgiving recess. All right, here we go. The Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. So this should be a new section in our notes for you. Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. And this tragedy leads to better workplace conditions. Um, three or four of the doors that were present, in, present at the factory were locked okay, from the uh, inside to prevent theft. There was a faulty fire escape. It was a skinny um, set of stairs to um, have people get down the stairs. And usually it only allowed one person at a time to go down. It, it was not wide stairs where you could fit two or three people at a time on a single step. It only allowed one person per step to go down. Uh, there was no sprinklers at the Triangle Shirt Waste fi uh, Factory. And there was no sprinklers because it was too expensive. The owners avoided jail by paying $75 per death. 146 people died, and therefore they paid roughly $11,000. All right, let's move on to the next slide. And here we go. Here is the Osh building. Which is good to know. And here is where the Triangle Shirtwaist Company um, was located. Okay, on these three floors, as you can see here. Okay, that Triangle Shirtwaist Factory okay, was on the very top floors. Um, in uh, the city um, surrounded by other buildings as well. Alright, let's take a look at the next slide. So, once the fire breaks out, thank goodness the fire department has arrived. Yay! But unfortunately, the ladders, as seen here, can only reach to the sixth floor. And again, the fire starts on the eighth here, ninth here, and tenth there. Okay, so the fire is on the eighth, ninth, and tenth <coughs> floors, and the um, ladders can only reach the sixth floor. Now the hoses can, are only reaching, as you can see here, the ninth and tenth floors. Okay, so this eighth floor is still really, you know, burning. Okay. And there's not much 
that they can do because the ladders can't reach the eighth floor and the pump trucks can't pump the water to the eighth floor. But the owners have come out and told the fire department, don't worry, the building itself <coughs> is fireproof. So don't worry, it's fireproof, okay? Let's take a look at the next slide. Oh. All right, here's some of the damage from the fire. Again, you know, the flames are all, all about here, you know, burning throughout the, the building. And all that's left, okay, once the flames are put out, is what you see here, okay? All of these pieces are destroyed in the factory. Here is uh, the view and the viewing of those that were killed okay, in their caskets already, okay? With police officers here and here. Okay, and we'll go back to um, that picture a little while earlier that uh, I thought was a little bit out of place. This one here, and this picture kind of shows us again, you know, a record for New York City. 145 lives lost. Building fireproof, like we said. Only fire escape collapses. A little bit of a whoopsie, right? So clearly this inspector of the buildings, as you can see here, has the hand of death, okay? So this Triangle Shirtwaist fire really was a um, fire to be remembered because of uh, the lack of uh, attention to uh, ensure that people are, are, are safe, okay? Uh, next, we're going to take a look here real quick at child labor, and we're going to take a look at how the other half lives, and this is a photo essay by uh, a photographer named Jacob Rees. Jacob Rees is a very, very, very famous photographer uh, during this time period, um, and his collection is very well known, showing how the other half lives. All right, so let's take a look here. Okay, so again, Danish born um, muckraker or journalist who sought to improve the lives of the poor in New York City. Muckrakers themselves, again, they were uh, journalists who sought out to expose problems, corruption, Just gonna move this for y'all real quick here so I can mark this up. There we go. Sorry about that. So again, muckrakers. I'm getting this into our notes here as well. There we go, sorry about that. So muckrakers, okay, and we should get this term down in our notes. These were journalists <coughs> who set out to expose problems, corruption, crime, or dangers that existed in major cities throughout the United States. So you wanna get this part down here about muckrakers. They wanted to uh, generate public interest and rally uh, to support folks to try and correct the problems themselves. Jacob Reese was considered, uh, considered poverty the most important concern in major cities across America, especially 
uh, focusing on the problem of children. Okay, and if you Google uh, Jacob Reese photographer, <coughs> you'll get this same uh, PowerPoint as I have too. <coughs> All right, let's take a look. So, how the other half lives. <coughs> so, Pictured here is an immigrant family with all of their possessions. Again, this is most likely a picture from the late 1800s, early 1900s. And you can see again that when we say uh, all of their possessions, we clearly do mean all of their possessions that they have. Okay are pictured here, okay? All right, next slide. This photograph shows uh, working conditions in the back alley of a tenement, okay, and what uh, life was like in the back alley of a tenement. Uh, this one shows, again, you know, blind beggar selling cigars on the street, trying to make enough money uh, for a meal and a bed. Uh, children moving trash. Um, and again, one of his hopes was to expose child labor. And these children are sleeping outside, trying to keep warm, huddled together uh, so that they could keep warm. Again, they would huddle together near grinds on the street in hopes to be warmed by the vents, near the, the grids rather, not the grinds, grids, <coughs> to be warmed by the hot air. And again, this is just a quote from his um, How the Other Half Lives. Uh, the poor were frequently found um, ill to the point of death on the streets. Freezing to death was very possible. Many of these impoverished New Yorkers shared shanties like this squatting uh, land in a back alley. Uh, garment workers might have to work 14 to 16 hours a day, being paid by the piece and not being paid very well. Um, this man has spread uh, a sleeping um, tick, essentially what we would consider a sleeping blanket on top of two barrels. Um, and the reason why it's on top of the barrels is because it's likely that the basement would flood. This is um, probably one of his most famous pictures here. This picture shows um, workers, okay, two, there's three there, there's two here, there's looks to be another here. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five here, six here, seven, eight people living in this apartment. And you can see here are their dishes. Here might be their laundry. Here's a chest. Here's a desk. Below the desk is some clothes. Okay, you have the mattresses on the floor. More clothes hanging up here. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. Um, so, another famous photo of Reese is because uh, the question that he asked uh, that came with this photo was 
um, you know, pictured here, does this poor baby in this photograph inherit justice and equality? So this baby pictured here in these conditions inherit justice and equality? Okay, or is it time that the United States takes action so that working families can provide for the basic needs of their own families? Again, uh, Reese, his hope was that, uh, oops, sorry, His hope was that uh, the working conditions that the poor were subject to and the living conditions would be exposed, uh, but he really put an emphasis on ending child labor okay, and improving schools um, as well. Uh, Reese's work inspired members um, of the Selman House movement like um, Jane Addams, who would go on to found Hull House, uh, the 16th Amendment, which created uh, a graduated income tax, um, was adopted and Americans became increasingly aware of the disparity between those that had wealth and those that were very poor. Okay, um, These are only a handful of his pictures. They are pictures uh, that Reese has, and you can, again, you can Google some of these. Uh, as well, where it's a picture of probably a 12-year-old boy selling roasted peanuts at 3 a.m. in New York City and Chicago and Detroit and Boston, all these cities around the country. And so the boy works, uh, you know, in the factories, in the mills, in the mines, you know, if he's working down in Virginia or West Virginia. And then the boy is selling peanuts by night uh, with a peanut carriage because he's renting the peanut carriage from the uh, gentleman who sells it during the day. And, you know, so you have a child that's been working in a factory all day with their hands, and now they're selling peanuts to the general population. Just picture, again, the amount of disease and whatnot that is uh, running rampant through... Uh, you know that city just based on that that one boy uh, selling peanuts with his dirty hands from a full day's worth of work. Um, there's another picture that shows a whole line of workers in Louisiana, uh, mothers and fathers working in Louisiana shucking crabs, so sticking the knife in into a crab and moving it from one side of the crab to the other, and at the head of the uh, shucking station is a three-year-old. Once uh, the child was old enough to see over the shucking station itself, the child was put to work. Three years old with a knife, shucking a crab. Okay, And they would work uh, usually eight to ten hours alongside their parents. Um, there's uh, another uh, famous picture of Reese's where he has uh, a large Jewish family knitting uh, garter belts in New York City at night. Um, and you could see the family, you know, at the dining room table. It's all one room, dining room table and bedroom, um, knitting these garter belts by night to just try and uh, stay alive, try to make ends meet. So um, for your iMovie project, just think of, it, think of that. You know, if you're looking at the promise of equality, the promise of change, um, if you're looking at you know, upward mobility uh, and trying to disprove that, uh, Jacob Reese really is a phenomenal person to, to uh, take a look at, to reference, uh, to try and show uh, this sense of equality. 
and the picture of the baby that you saw earlier just a few minutes ago uh, does a really good job of, of really pushing the issue of that question. So now a baby's born, but into what? Okay. So again, uh, just a quick reminder, make sure that you watch uh, The Men Who Built America, Parts 3 and Part 4 for the given times. Make sure you watch this set of notes. If you have not picked your promise for the American Dream and place that on a Google Doc, be sure to do so so that I can see it as well. Uh, starting Monday when we get back, we're going to take a look at setting up some uh, subfolders, some nesting folders in uh, your uh, American Dream Resources folder. And we're going to take a look at um, trying to uh, extract uh, some of the information that you guys are going to be looking at uh, directly into uh, the Google Doc. Okay, So uh, make sure that you're working on that over vacation. If uh, you have any questions, please feel free to drop me an email. Um, I don't have a date yet for an assessment on the content material, but I can uh, guarantee you that I will be checking the Men Who Built America sheets um, once we get back. Okay, So you want to make sure that you've watched these videos by Tuesday when we get back and uh, that, again, you know, um, you uh, have the content knowledge uh, for another uh, quiz. Okay? Um, I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving recess. Enjoy uh, the next uh, five days that you have off. And I look forward to seeing you guys Monday, uh, December 2nd. Have a great weekend and happy Turkey Day.